Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about finding volumes with cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. And we're gonna know what the cross section is. So uh, let's take a look. So first we're told the base of a solid is the region in the xy plane that is bounded by y equals x squared and y equals two x plus three. So to get a sense of what we're doing, I think we should probably sketch that. So let's just try to do that. So first, to find where they intersect, um, so this, you can do the work and you'll get x is negative one and x is three. So I'm gonna start sketching. So some axes, there's x squared, there's two x plus three. Then we have our two intersection points. So we have uh, negative one, one, and then we also have uh, three, nine. So our region is that kind of, I don't know, like uh, kind of a banana type shape um, between the curves. And now let's look at the type of questions that we would want to answer. So we're told uh, what the cross sections look like. So cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are, we're gonna deal with five of them. Squares, which is probably the most common thing. Equilateral triangles, which has a factor in front of it that you wanna memorize. Semicircles, you definitely wanna memorize. Um, cross sectional area, a of x is three plus sine of x, which is the weirdest type of problem, but by far the easiest one to do. And then um, in part E, there we're gonna have rectangular cross sections with the base in the xy plane. And then we're just told that the height is equal to x squared. So whatever x is, we'll square it, and that's the height of the rectangle. All right, so what I'm gonna do is uh, mostly set these up and then use a calculator to evaluate them. I have another video where I go into a little more depth about like where each of the formulas come from. So I suggest you watch that. Um, but I'm gonna do these just so you have some practice problems. So let's see. Uh, in general, what I want to use is the fact that the volume is going to be the integral from A to B, so where you're starting and where you're stopping, of the area of the cross section. Um, so that's why we're going to want to memorize some areas of cross sections. You can work them out geometrically, but on the AP exam, you want to just have it memorized. Um, and then dx, because we're going to be perpendicular to the x-axis. So A and B are going to be x values. And then the area of a cross section is going to be a function of x. So let's do the problem. So first, uh, we're gonna find the volume when the cross sections are squares. So we're gonna start, we're looking at that region in the xy plane. So that goes from negative one to three. So the bottom bound is negative one, the top bound is three. And then uh, I need to figure out what I'm gonna be squaring, right? So the area of a square is just side squared, but what am I gonna square? Well, uh, if that region uh, is the base, then if I go from the top curve to the bottom curve like that, that should be the side of the square that I'm gonna build. And that is the line minus the quadratic. So two X plus three minus X squared gives me that distance. So that's the side, so I'm just gonna square it. So two X plus three minus X squared, quantity squared, DX. So make sure when you put it in your calculator that uh, like everything gets squared. And uh, that's approximately, I'm gonna do all approximate on these. So 34.133. Let's take a look at B. So B is almost the same question, except this time uh, we're dealing with equilateral triangles. Uh, so a side of the triangle is uh, that thing that we worked out before. You definitely want to memorize the volume of an e uh, the area, I guess, of an equilateral triangle is root three over four side squared. And side is the thing we already calculated. So we're just going to go with root three over four. So I like to pull that out and put it in front of the integral. And then it's basically the same integral. So we're gonna go from negative one to three, and then the side is still two x plus three minus x squared, and we wanna square the side. And uh, this, according to my calculator, approximately 14.780. Uh, semicircles, another one you definitely wanna memorize. So this one's probably the most worth memorizing because it's kind of the hardest to work out. Um, it has a factor of pi over eight in front of it. So it's gonna be pi over eight, and then, uh, so what we're really dealing with is that thing that we have there is the diameter, but it all works out. If you use pi over eight, it ends up the integral from negative one to three of um, that side that we're finding squared again. So they all actually kind of end up working out this way when it's like a known cross section and it's like very geometric. So A, B, and C always work out as, you know, it's side squared, then it's root three over four side squared, and then it's pi over eight side squared. And this is approximately 13.404. Uh, the next one, as I mentioned before, is actually the easiest one to do because we're going to integrate the area of a cross section um, over the region. So we're told the area of a cross section for some reason is three plus sine of x. 
who knows how that worked out. But our volume is just gonna be the integral from negative one to three, because that's the, the bounds of the area of a cross section, which is the quantity three plus sine of x. So this one's super easy. Um, you just have to like recognize that it's easy and not try to overthink it. And we get approximately 13.530. And then finally, uh, we have a, a different type of rectangle. So the base is in the xy plane. So the base um, is gonna be that segment we drew. So two x plus three minus x squared. And then the height is x squared and the area of a rectangle is base times height. So let's write an integral for that. So our volume, so we're still going from negative one to three because it's dx, we're perpendicular to the x-axis. Uh, the base is the quantity two uh, x plus three minus x squared. The height, we're told, is x squared, and then dx. And this is, I'm gonna go with an exact answer on this, just 96 over five. All right, so that's five examples where we're perpendicular to the x-axis. It's a really common type of problem to do. It's not super scary. Uh, there's just a couple things you should definitely memorize. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.